We built an insane AMD Ryzen computer that just screams power. Oh, and it, it runs macOS. We call it Ryzen Shine because it's time for Apple and Intel to wake up. This video is sponsored by Hostinger, the best web host around. Whether you are a noob looking to make your first website or an IT expert working for a sizable business, Hostinger has something to fit your needs. Try Hostinger today at hostinger.com slash snazzy and get up to 91% off when you use my discount code snazzy. We're nearing the dawn of the new Mac Pro. Slated for a December 2019 launch, this machine is something that professionals have been waiting for for more than six years, as it intends to fix many of the missteps that were made with the 2013 trash can. Now, that was an update that came yesterday and promised bug fixes to this beloved Mac Pro. But I'm still experiencing some weird stuff. I'll talk about this in future videos, but when I do the actual video, um, or when I do heavy car, uh, duty processing, the Mac Pro performs great. When I have Final Cut open, there are no delays, it is awesome. And it processes like a beast. The problem is in just basic apps, switching windows and doing kind of stuff, it is very laggy and sometimes it even come, it, it, it snatches, it, it hangs up. Fun fact, Spanish accent Quinn, they're still selling that 2013 Mac Pro in November, 2019. Anyway, returning to the cheese grater style chassis, the new machine seems to focus on modularity, expandability, and thermals. Uh, Apple basically built a PC, which is what people like me have been asking for for years, as I expressed in my breakdown video you can watch here. But there's a big problem. You see, the new Mac Pro starts at $6,000 US, and many of your favorite YouTubers will be quick to point out that this new Mac is not intended for people like you, it's for professionals. And that the high price really becomes a good deal when you think about how much your Mac as a tool earns you money. But sorry, I just, I don't see the logic in that hold up. Sure, the four inch LCD touchscreen on my camera makes my life easier. And I suppose that indirectly, it does help me make money, but no matter how you slice it, $650 for this garbage low quality screen that costs less than 20 bucks to make will never be a good deal. Many people will go out and buy the new Mac Pro and think it's the greatest thing ever. And so will we. Well, I don't know that we'll think it's the greatest thing ever, but we'll go out and buy one and we will bring you the best coverage of that machine. So be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications for that. But $6,000 is objectively a bad value for the Mac Pro with its base specifications at least. Unfortunately, Apple also doesn't have any other options on the prosumer market save for the iMac Pro, which has its own set of trade-offs. So we decided to build Ryzen Shine, an all AMD Hackintosh with cooling and performance numbers that will blow your mind. And we did it at a fraction of the cost of both Mac Pro and iMac Pro. You may have noted that I said all AMD because well, it is. That's right, we are using a Ryzen 3900X 12 core, 24 thread CPU, clocked at a 3.8 gigahertz base clock with a max boost of 4.6 gigahertz. But wait a minute, you're thinking, Apple only makes Intel machines. True, more on how we got macOS up and running in a second. But the Ryzen 9 is slotted into the ASRock X570 Creator, which is a crazy expensive motherboard and isn't admittedly the prettiest motherboard on the block, but we bought it because the feature set is mighty impressive. It comes with both a 10 gig LAN port, which pairs nicely with the edit server we built earlier this year, as well as two Thunderbolt 3 ports. That's right, you heard me, two. What was previously an Intel exclusive feature spec was made royalty free earlier this year, and Zen 2 can support the standard. Thunderbolt. However, ASRock is the first one to support this ambitious crossover. I'd always get complaints on Hackintosh builds that they were missing features that a real Mac had. But with both Thunderbolt 3 and 10 gigabit LAN, that's no longer the case. Our RAM is 64 gigabytes of DDR4 G Skill Trident Z RGB running at 3600 megahertz. And while the 3900X CPU does support ECC memory for those that need it, I, and most people, don't, and so I opted not to purchase it. As for the GPUs, we are using dual Vega 64 cards, which while not super great for gaming, are excellent for metal compute in both Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve in Mac OS. And yes, those applications will hardware accelerate both GPUs. We got these cards because they were cheaper than the Radeon 7, because you can buy them used, and more powerful at metal compute than the new 5700 XT. 
Just like Mojave, Catalina does not support NVIDIA web drivers, so you are stuck with AMD GPUs. But thankfully, that's becoming less and less of a downside as the Radeon division ups its game. The rest of the components, save for some loose odds and ends, were graciously provided to us by our friends at Corsair. They sent us over a two terabyte MP600 SSD, which is the first PCI4 SSD drive with mind-numbingly fast speeds, uh, over four gigabytes read and write per second. We plopped everything into Corsair's 680X RGB case covered in tempered glass, and while I have some frustrations with the design of the case, like the water pump mounting position, which is way too high, and general airflow restrictions, the glass is in the way, it's certainly pretty. The system is powered by an HX1080 Plus Platinum power supply, which gives us more than enough for our selected components. Now we get to water cooling. Yes, water. I chose not to go with air cooling because I had never done a custom water loop before, and Corsair's Hydro X series makes it really pretty easy because you go to their configurator, you tell them the case you're building and what components you have, and then they just give you everything you need, which really made it pretty easy for us. Now, it started with disassembling our GPUs and taking the original coolers off of them in favor of the Hydro X water blocks for Vega 64. So we did this to both of our GPUs, and then we added our CPU block on, and we inserted both of the radiators into the case as well uh, with the fans in the appropriate configuration. Once all our components were in there, we had to start planning our loop. And uh, we decided to use bulkhead fittings, which basically just pass through holes. So you can do hardline tubing on the front where everyone sees your build. And then you can do soft line tubing in the back, which is easier to install. Uh, there's cost saving advantages and it's more reliable, especially when you're moving cables and crap around. Well, it turns out hardline PCs are, they're a lot harder than PC modders make them out to be. I completely wasted probably $20 of tubing and how many hours, Derek? Oh my gosh, like a whole day. <laughs> like at least a whole day, a long, long time. From heating and reheating tubes too many times and eyeballing measurements incorrectly, but I did get a loop eventually. And I was even told by my PCMR pals that it's a pretty complex run for a first timer and an idiot Apple user nonetheless. So I'm happy with that. Uh, price. We mounted the pump, installed the soft tubing, as well as our drain tube, and then we tested the system for leaks by running distilled water with all of our components shut off, thanks to the 24-pin uh, jumper that Corsair includes that will power your pump, but nothing else. And after we determined that no, there were no leaks, we drained the loop, and then we installed our opaque white coolant from XSPC, and oh, oh, oh baby, that is hot. That's hot. All this water cooling hardware will certainly help push our components pretty far. But honestly, you probably could have gotten pretty close in performance for about $1,000 less running on just really good air coolers instead. Water cooling is expensive. At the same time, it wouldn't have looked as sexy, and I think our new rig gives the Mac Pro a run for its money in the looks department. Just a bit more in a pro gamer RGB way. With the Rise and Shine fully assembled, it was time to put Mac OS on the thing. Believe it or not, a few years ago, I actually did a first-gen Ryzen Hackintosh, and it was, it was an absolute nightmare. You basically had to compile your own kernel, which was very difficult and crazy buggy. You couldn't update anything in the OS without breaking everything. And there were tons of features that just straight up didn't work. It was not worth it. And I foolishly believed that that had continued to be the truth with Ryzen Zen 2. Well, I was wrong. The AMD OS X community has been working crazy hard and now has what they call a vanilla kernel, which basically works on all series FX, A, Ryzen, and Threadripper CPUs and their associated motherboards. In fact, when I found the installation guide, I thought it was just a bad, incomplete guide because of how short it was, but <laughs> it wasn't. I was able to download macOS, flash it to a USB drive, add the necessary Kex drivers for my motherboard, like 10 gigabit ethernet support and dual GPU support, and get macOS installed in my machine in less than 30 minutes. Better yet, unlike Intel Hackintoshes, there was essentially zero post installation required, which made it, believe it or not, the easiest Hackintosh installation I have ever done. And any noob could do it without issue. It is easier than an Intel Hack Mac. Amazing. So what doesn't work? Well, really only three things, and you have to decide how important they are to you because they would work on an Intel build. FaceTime, iMessage, and Siri. I can review and view iMessage conversations. Uh, I can even see the ones that I've sent from other devices, but I can't send them. 
Uh, we were also dumb and built our entire hardline loop first before we remembered to replace the Wi-Fi card on the motherboard with our macOS compatible one. But if you buy one of those cards, and you can get them for about $30 on eBay, you can get handoff, continuity, and even the new iPad sidecar feature working just fine. But look, none of that matters if Ryzenshine doesn't kick butt. And <laughs> kick butt it does. With our motherboard set to auto overclock with the appropriate XMP profile for our RAM, the results, I mean, they just, they speak for themselves. In Geekbench single core, it's faster than any Mac Apple has ever released. And in Geekbench multi-core, it's only bested by the 18 core iMac Pro, which retails for $9,000 and only has one GPU as opposed to Ryzenshine's two. In Cinebench and all our other real-world compute tests, that seems to hold true as well. Be it video editing, app compiling, or computational work, this thing just shines through at the very top of Apple's lineup. The best part, this isn't even AMD's top consumer chip anymore with the release of the much faster 3950X. If you want us to do a follow-up with that CPU in this machine, be sure to give this video a like and leave a comment down below, and we'll do it. Graphics performance for Metal Compute, perhaps unsurprisingly, works quite well since these are full-sized, well-cooled Vega 64 cards, which get very hot, unlike the gimped ones in iMac Pro. And even gaming fares pretty well in Mac OS, though it's, it's a Hackintosh, right? So <laughs> just boot into Windows and play the games using the much more optimized DirectX instead when you're feeling the need to WASD. Speaking of WASD, you will need none of those keys to go to Hostinger.com, today's sponsor and the best web host around. Whether you are a noob trying to set up your first website for your wedding or the IT manager of a sizable business and you have the need for dedicated IPs and isolated resources, Hostinger has something to fit your needs. For example, we made snazzy2019.com, a WordPress website that highlights a few of the accomplishments our company had in its biggest year ever. This took just a few minutes as we were walked through Hostinger's excellent guided setup, which helped us purchase a domain, install our theme, and set up our backend in a matter of seconds. Hostinger's easy HPanel software allows for easy email setup, native Cloudflare protection, free site backups, a fully featured website builder, an SEO toolkit, FTP and MySQL access, and more. Unlike shady web hosts, which upsell and have hidden fees, Hostinger makes clear the charges you'll incur before you incur them, and provides a number of typically premium features like SSL certificates and who is privacy free of charge dependent on your plan. Let's say you are a graphic designer. You can set up a forward-facing website for your internet front yard, like your portfolio, but in minutes as well have a private backyard with things like client invoicing and proofing. Try Hostinger today at hostinger.com snazzy and get up to 91% off when you use my discount code snazzy. So there you have it, a killer Ryzen-based Macintosh without the laundry list of compromises that the original Hackintosh has included. Just a lean, fast, screaming machine. We're sadly putting Windows back on this thing since Derek, my uh, wretched cinematographer, is a Windows user primarily and is switching, and is switching to DaVinci Resolve. But uh, it is pretty funny to admit that when I get my shiny new $6,000 Mac Pro next month, well, it won't be able to outbench the computer that's in this room at nearly half the price. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like this one, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.